Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to continue our series of the G3000 while we focus our attentions on the MFD, which is the multi-function display. Let's get started. So as we saw last time, when we went through the basics of kind of where the screens are and sort of how they are, today what we're going to be doing is concentrating on the middle screen, which is going to be the one that for most folks you're probably going to be using more as a reference screen than you're going to be using as a screen that you know, you're going to be sitting there going like this the entire flight. One of the important things that I need to throw out too is depending on the style that you're using for this particular aircraft, depending on how you arrange the avionics, it's going to have a big impact kind of on where some objects are and the way some of these different things appear. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and flip on the automatic pilot. Now this is going to make my life just a little bit simpler here. Go ahead and put a nav hold and we're also going to go ahead and make sure we've got ourselves getting a nice little flick here because uh, about 160 is a pretty good climb rate. I'm also going to back off on the power just a little bit. We don't need to be uh, ripping along full power here because we're really not in a rush to get to our destination. All right, let's go ahead down and now take a look at our MFD. So the MFD is also known as the multi-function display. Now, the purpose of an MFD in any aircraft, whether it's the G3000 display like we have here or G1000, is to provide the pilot with kind of like where they are and kind of a systems overview. For me, this is flying the plane. For me, this is getting where it needs to go. There's a bunch of different things you're going to see on this particular one. And keep in mind, in the real G3000, we have a couple extra bells and whistles kind of down here. We're not going to get, we're not going to worry about it too, too much. On the left side of the MFD, you're always going to be having a general readout of all the different systems on board the aircraft. Uh, the way that the systems are laid out is pretty straightforward. You have your engine stuff here, and then you usually have your secondary functions over here on the right column. For example, you can see since we're a turboprop, we're measured in torque. We got about 72% max torque, 2,000 revolutions per minute. Now our gas generator is about 91 and a half. Interstage turbine temperature, you can see our oil pressure. But one of the things to note about all these instruments is regardless of the number provided to here, it always will tell you relatively where it is as opposed to where it should be. So in this case, I can see very, very clearly that our oil pressure is in the green, and I can see our oil temperatures on the lower side of the green. And we can see by the CIS, a CAS rather, which is a crew alert system, we can tell our initial separator is currently flipped on. Now we have some clouds today, and it's a little warm outside, a little humid, so I'm not too, too worried about getting any ice. So I'm gonna go ahead and now pop the initial separator off, and you're gonna notice that down here that the message will disappear, and again, any alerts will appear at any time. To the right of that, you're gonna have kind of your secondary sizing system. These are going to be things like your cabin pressure. In this case, you can see it's climbing right now plus our differential. You're also going to have our fuel quantity. It's also going to tell you what fuel tank you're currently pulling fuel through, as well as a measurement of it. Going below that, of course, you're going to have your electrical readouts, and everything is in the green here. Remember, you have a backup generator on here. So the reason that reads zero is if you actually were to float up above your head real quickly here, you'll notice that our backup generator is not engaged. So if it were to be engaged, and again, we have an option for that right here if we need it, um, we, of course, would show some kind of amperage coming out of that at this time, which, like I said, we're not going to save. Below that, of course, you have all your trims. You can see our rudder trim is actually considerably off. It's supposed to be way back over here. And you can see our elevator trim. Obviously, we're not taking off right now, as well as our flap display. Across the top of the MFD, you're going to have a collection of all sorts of useful navigational information. Now, one thing to note is if you actually change what you have up there, uh, for example, let me do, uh, I'll put the weather radar on, it's just as an example. Uh, we will actually do the weather radar. Yeah, we'll pop that one on real quick. You'll notice, for example, that these numbers at the top will always remain constant, regardless of what item that you're actually going to have down here. So if I'm not worried about that, for example, let's go ahead and flip it on. We'll set the uh, to weather hold real quick, and we'll give it just a moment. I like that one, and we'll give it a moment to actually acquire. There is no weather ahead of us, so naturally you're not going to be seeing anything on here. But again, these values will remain constant across the top of the screen, regardless of what you're doing. This is going to be our ground speed. We're doing 154 knots. This is going to be desired track, and this is going to be our actual track. Unfortunately for us, our desired and actual are the same. After beyond that, we're going to have ETE. This is estimated time on route. Uh, to the right of that is going to be bearing. Uh, keep in mind, this number will not necessarily line up with this. This is where we're actually pointing. Uh, obviously, the wind isn't very strong. Uh, this is going to be our distance to next waypoint. This is what time we're supposed to arrive. And what I love is it actually gives you an estimated time of landing, in which case we're going to be down on the ground at about 1904. So, of course, you got to do all the subtraction from four hours for UTC and all that. But the key element is these are always visible no matter what's going on down here, which makes it a little bit easier. Speaking of what's going on here, our currently activated selected display is what they call the map view. Uh, this is going to be giving us a top-down representation of what's going on. Uh, notice we don't have a side view here. Uh, we only have a top-down sort of view on here. Now, there's a lot of ways we can customize the amount of information and how it is displayed on your screen. Now, the way we would do that is we come down here to one of the GTC1s and actually adjust it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the MFD button, which is going to highlight it here. You'll notice that this is pane and has these two squares here. The reason being is the blue square is the one we're actually selected right now. And of course, now if we come down to our different options, such as map settings, we can now adjust everything that we see up on this display here. 
Now, one of the things that people like to change, for example, is they like to go to orientation. And there's a couple different options here. We have heading up, which is the nose of the plane. We have track, which is where we're going. And then we have north up, which is going to orient the map so that the top edge of the screen is actually north. Now, people will have uh, battles to the end of time as to the correct view, but everybody knows uh, God intended it to be uh, track up. But again, you could disagree with me all you want on that one. That's, just, that's what I'm used to. You do whatever you want kind of a thing. You're also going to have the map sync option. Uh, again, we're not going to worry about that too, too much. This would just give us the ability to grab map settings from a different view and stick them right on here. I'm not going to worry about that for today. I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, coming down here, we have this really, really, really important button. Uh, that one right there is map detail. That's going to allow us to select how much detail we want to show. Right now, we're at maximum detail. If I were to click this and go drop this down, you'll notice I just have my critical waypoints, including my top of descent here. If I kick this up a little bit, notice it's only going to give me my airports. If I kick it up again, notice it's going to give me waypoints and airspaces. Notice if I really crank on it, it's going to tell me everything. Now, it's worth noting that beyond just that option, we can actually tweak the map detail. We're going to take a look at that in a minute. Over here on the right, you have all your different settings specific to the different parts of that map. For example, under sensor, uh, we have traffic. If I click on this, you'll have the ability to not only select whether or not you want to have traffic, you have the ability to do whether it's absolute or relative. What this simply means is if you pick up traffic, I have traffic turned off at the moment, this will tell you whether or not the target altitude is above or below you, whereas absolute will tell you the actual altitude. For example, we're at flight level 120 right now. If somebody were at uh, flight level 140, if we were on relative mode, it would say plus two. If we are on absolute mode, it would say actually minus two zero, I'm sorry. It would actually say the one four zero, so we know the altitude. One of the nice perks, and this is more of a real world thing, but you can actually tell it to only give you people above, below, or at your same altitude. Personally, um, having flown in the real world a little while, uh, you want that kind of everywhere kind of a thing. On the right, you also have the traffic display. You can decide whether or not you want to show this. Again, this is ADSB. This is just a way of receiving traffic. And of course, there's this great thing here called motion vector. What this will do is allow you to predict the position of the target traffic. So if you notice, for example, this little blue line sticking out of my nose right here, if, um, let's say, we had another object coming this way, this blue line would allow me to see whether or not our two lines are going to be crossing each other. If you put this on relative, it's going to be relative to you. So if we had this jumper and he had a little arrow this way, that simply means no matter what his current speed is, he's going to be going this way relative to you. Now, if we had a Jag right here and he had a line going like this right at our current track, um, that would probably be a situation where we'd be a little concerned and we'd want to know that. You can also control how long it takes for that actual vector to appear. So I say, give me a 30 second preview or give me a five minute preview. And again, that's all going to be related back to traffic. Our next option is going to be our train. Uh, there's a lot of different choices you have for terrain. Um, I'm a huge fan of absolute. It's kind of what I'm used to. Uh, relative works really, really well. This is just a way you can kind of see things around you. A lot of people, what they'll do is they'll use relative terrain on one display, and they'll use absolute terrain on the other display. Uh, the reason you'll do this is absolute will tell you, you know, this is mountain, this is a valley. Relative will tell you, that's a tall mountain, that's a shallow valley. And that can be a very, very critical differentiation when you're navigating around all sorts of different items. You have Connects Radar. Um, we're not going to pick up anything on the radar here. All that does is that will attack the radar that your next rad would be in the real plane. We don't have that. This 500 nautical miles thing that you see here simply allows you to dictate how far out you actually want the radar to look. So if you put it at 250, you have no weather past 250. It's just kind of one of those things. It's kind of nice, but again, it depends on what you're using it for. I'm going to leave that alone. Pressing down, uh, we're going to have again, you can see the last couple pieces here. We don't get any of these sources. It's too bad. Um, this is where you pick next rad and all that stuff. Next one is going to be inset window. Um, one of the cool things you can actually do, and I love this, is if you push this button, it actually brings up this miniature window down here, which actually allows you to see exactly what your aircraft is doing and what it expects to be doing. Uh, one of the reasons I love this so, so, so much is this is a really easy to read display of your current flight plan. Like I can see, this is how much fuel I have. This is the altitude I need to be at. You know, this is what time it's going to be when I get there. I have no VNAV profile right now. If I did, which I probably will program one in a minute, that will give me the ability to punch that in. Now, the cool thing is if you switch this to cumulative mode, it'll actually, instead of saying what the leg is, this will tell you how much total you've accomplished, in which case we're going to hit Lomas at 16 minutes into the flight. Or if I hit this, it's a 1 minute 31, if that makes a little bit more sense here. Very, very, very useful tool. If we want to shut that off, by the way, we just hit that one. Fortunately, we don't have vert situation, which is kind of a bummer. I could show you what things look like sideways. It's kind of a neat tool. All right, aviation. Now, this is important because depending on what you set your detail to, this is going to be affected by it. For example, if I click this button off, all the airspaces are gone. But notice my map detail has a, everything still left inside of it. So if I turn that back on, you can see all my aviation's airspaces come back. 
you can shut off air spaces. One really nice trick that I really, really like, and unfortunately we don't have this in here, is you could actually tell it to go ahead and use certain altitudes. See the smart airspace? It would only show you the air light. It would actually change the color of the airspace depending on if it affects you or not, which is really, really useful. We don't have that, unfortunately. Below that, under settings, of course, you can do little things where you can define uh, how far away you want to see the airports. Obviously, the small airports like CT43 right here is um, within range of us. So it goes ahead and puts it. But if you came in here and put this to 10, notice all those airports disappeared and we only have the little airports that are actually going to be close enough to us in that case. Now, one of the neat things is you can actually make this um, kind of play the game of which altitude based on what setting you put in there. But that's a different day. We have our VOR, of course, this is a range. If you're doing a maximum range of VORs, you can crank that visibility up pretty high. It's not gonna make that much of a difference. I mean, I'm putting them up there because I'm just not zoomed out. Scrolling down here, of course, you have your intersections. I love shutting that button off. Um, some people are like, oh, you gotta turn it on 10 nautical miles and leave it that way. I don't hate that because uh, basically it, you're only going to see the ones that are relevant and really declutters things, but you can see what I mean. NDB, nobody uses those. User waypoints, oh, we don't have them, so unfortunately we can't use those directly. Last one is we're going to have the other options. This is actually kind of neat. Uh, these options are basically the ones that are going to dictate your ability to change the automatic north mode. So for example, if I come down here with range and I wheel this a bunch of times and really crank the range, once you exceed a certain distance, what it should do is snap to um, its other ways uh, north up once you cross past that point. I'll zoom back in and what it would do is it rotate back. Oh, we're picking up some weather. <gasps> there is weather, I can't believe it. So again, that's pretty handy. The next one you have on here is kind of interesting. It's called your track vector. Um, that's this little blue line. Now, when you're doing a lot of hand flying, I love this thing amazingly because it gives you the ability to know exactly where your airplane is going to be a certain amount of time from where you are. So for example, if I come in here and sit 30, that got a lot shorter. If I come in here and say, I don't know why we do five minutes, you could. You could hit five minutes and you can see where your aircraft is going to be five minutes from now. Now, one of the fun things is my co-pilot. Um, absolutely, you notice by the way, five minutes from top of descent, pretty cool, huh? Um, one of the nice things with this, of course, is my co-pilot's always fits in with this to try to time things and determine things. It works really, really well. I like two minutes. Some people like a little more. At the bottom, this is so cool. Click see anything, right? Yeah, I'll show you why. So that is your selected range arc. You know, what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to give you a arc on the screen that tells you how far away you can travel before you've run out of gas. Now, unfortunately, because of the way I have my aircraft set up with the current fuel capacity, you're probably not going to see that arc, which is kind of a bummer because once you zoom past a certain point, you don't see it anyway. So this is kind of a neat little trick that you uh, normally have in here. There's a bunch of other fun things in here that we can play with and we get on the real one that we don't get here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, whoop, split that. We'll talk about that in a minute. So that's it for adjusting the map. Uh, the map is tremendously useful. People usually ask me, well, what do you do with your map? What's your map look like? Um, my map looks like this. That's about as much as I need to know. Um, like I said, in the real world, you have the ability to get the smart airspaces. I love playing with that. But honestly, this is too much detail. I don't need that many airports here. It's just making it cluttered. And again, you're the pilot. You decide. But again, clutter's bad. So I think you know where I stand on that. Coming back here, another option, of course. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to leave my map view. Is I'm going to show you the ability to split. Now, one of the things that makes the MFED so useful in the G3000 is we can come down here and press this button and snap my display in half. Now, this gives me the ability by rolling this, I'm holding my mouse over this and just wheeling the middle scroll wheel, I can change which one I'm interested in. For example, I can make my left side my map settings and I can make my right side, oh, let's do weather. So if I come into weather selection, I can do WX radar, I can change the mode. Obviously, I shut the darn thing off, so I'm not getting anything out. Uh, we're going to take uh, weather mode, please. We don't want standby. Go back to this. And I can see very clearly, by the way, this is now going to adjust my range. If I zoom out to 120 nautical miles, there is no weather ahead of me, which just happened to work, work out that day. It's a summer day, so it doesn't surprise me. But now notice, if I come back to this knob and click this, I'm now picked the left pane. So I now have the ability, of course, to come over here and do different stuff. I don't know why I do this, but I could do that too. You know, I could turn on the traffic display. Personally, for me, when it comes to splitting screens, and again, you're going to do what works best for you, is I actually like to do this. I like to split it, grab it, go to this pane here, and a lot of times what I actually do is I'll do something like this. I'll put the traffic over there, and then in the middle, if you want to get all fancy technical-like, you do something like this, so that way you have everything visible inside of your screen. Some people like putting the map view here, but again, it's completely up to you and what works best for you as a pilot. When you're working on an approach, it's really, really nice to have this here. Speaking of approaches, uh, remember if you have the Navigraph charts, uh, you actually have the ability to select the actual chart that you're using here. So you can post that in the middle, or if you want it to be a show off, you can do one of these things. And you can actually zoom in like that to make it a little bit easier to actually you know, work with whatever you're trying to work. When you hit chart selection, by the way, we've done this in another video, we can actually come through and kind of tweak all these. I'm not gonna mess with that. Like I said, I kind of 
sort of a fan of uh, doing one of these kind of a things. I just find this is the simplest way for me to do it. But again, remember, the one that's actually highlighted is the one that you're currently selecting. So kind of keep that in mind. The last thing we're going to see for our little MFD here is when you come to the very, very, very bottom here, uh, you have this option for aircraft systems. So if you press that button, it's going to bring you up to a couple different systems pages. If I press the fuel, notice it brings up a brand new menu, which gives me my current fuel. It says I have negative 17 gallons of gas. Who knew? Of course, if you go to electrical power, it's going to give you a nice breakdown of the electrical systems. General, it's just going to show you kind of what's going on with the aircraft. You can see what heats are turned on, things like that. A weight and fuel, uh, believe it or not, uh, one of the things that you can do in this aircraft is you can define what your basic empty weight is. And when you set this, the nice thing about this is it'll actually know how much fuel you're carrying. And if you know your fuel gauge isn't reading correctly, this will read much, much more accurately. One thing I'm really, really tickled with is you can actually come through and you can actually program all the different values here. So if you're looking for how much fuel we're going to have, you can actually come in here and define it. You know, if I have uh, 50 gallons, for example, it'll just be nice and boring. My holding time, it never takes five minutes. It always takes 15 minutes to hold. You know exactly how much fuel I don't not have. <laughs> and it gives you a really, really good idea. So again, a really, really slick trick that you have in here, if you want to fit with it. Last one in here is lighting configuration. The only thing that happens here is if I crank this down, all you're going to do is you're going to make everything dimmer. I mean, if you're flying at night, this is an absolute godsend. Although theoretically, it should be auto dimming, but I didn't see that particular feature there. So as you can see, the uh, G3000 um, MFD is a fantastic tool. Uh, the one thing you got to want to remember is make it so that it works for you. Don't sit there and try to fight it. Don't feel like you need to do different pieces. Like if it's getting in the way and it's not telling you what you critically need to do at a specific phase of flight, you should go back and either get rid of it, make it smaller, or just kind of pull it out of the way so it's a little bit easier for it to operate. But other than that, enjoy.